Hello, my name is Paul Arnold. I serve as a chaplain here at Glacier Hill Senior Living. It's August 26th, the summer is almost over, and I'm sort of sad about that. I love summer, I love the weather, and all of us are waiting not only for fall in a way, but we're waiting for this pandemic to get down to a manageable level where we can all be outside and do the things we love the most. So today I wanna to share with you our community worship uh, typical service where we have prayer, we have hymns, I share with you some heavenly humor, I'll share with you a message, and then a little bonus feature later I'll show you a video from photos from my daughter's wedding last weekend. I had shared that in previous videos, I wanted to show you some of that as well. So thank you for joining me. I love singing hymns. Sometimes people will see me in my car and I'm singing. It's out of joy. And when I'm troubled and I'm thinking about things deeply, I often pray to God. Uh, I like what the Apostle Paul said, that he said that we should pray without ceasing throughout the day, like a conversation. And so now we're going to have a prayer of confession, and then I'll lead us through the Lord's Prayer. O oh Lord, unclutter our lives. We have too much, consume too much, and expect too much. Grant us perspective to see this world through others' eyes than just our own. Grant us compassion where there is need to play our part to not turn aside. Grant us gratitude for what we have and for our daily bread, the gift of life. Unclutter our lives, Lord, 
Give us space. We pray for simplicity and thankful hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we say the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One of the regular features on these videos and before that in our community worship service was a section I called Heavenly Humor. I would print these jokes or riddles or fun things on our bulletin with the hope that our residents would take that bulletin and share it with their loved ones when they talked to them on the phone and personal visits as well. Uh, so I have three uh, quotes, Heavenly Humor quotes on weddings and then uh, I have a little video of different cartoons that uh, one of our residents, Tim Hogan, shared with me. So here's some interesting sayings about wedding. The first one is from the famous mystery writer, Agatha Christie. She said, An archaeologist is the best husband a woman can have. The older she gets, the more interested he is in her. <laughs> here's an anonymous quote. Love may be blind, but marriage is a real eye-opener. And the last one is sort of a humorous thing. You know, often fathers have to say a speech at the wedding. And on Saturday, I said a speech at my daughter's wedding. But this one goes like this. The father of the bride said to the new groom, John, I have a top tip for you. My daughter will not start an argument with you if you're already cleaning. So true. 
Here is a video from Tim Hogan and some of the cartoons that he wanted to share with you. Years ago, I told my children that I would not officiate at their weddings. I told them I had seen many weddings and there's plenty for the father and the mother to process and to handle emotionally without having a very big part in the actual service. And so I was so pleased that at my daughter's service this last weekend, Dr. Stephen Hogewerf, who's a professor at Hope College, did a wonderful job of sharing a great message. I'm doing a wedding for a couple in, on Labor Day weekend, and I had something for the first time presented to me. The bride said, in the pre-planning of the wedding, she said, is it all right if I see what you're going to say before the wedding? I said, do you want to see what my message is going to be? She said, yes. She said, she went on to explain that she was at a wedding, and at the wedding, this minister that the couple really didn't know very well, went on to give a message that really wasn't appropriate. And so this soon-to-be bride that I'm going to do the wedding for was nervous, and I share with her a message, one of the three or four standard messages I give at weddings. And she responded back that she really loved it. And so I thought I would share it with you now. Um, just some reminders for couples, but also a reminder for all of us how to love and care for one another. And so I usually start off at a wedding telling how much I believe that God has brought two people together in love and joy, each with their own gifts and their strengths and their needs, so they could be more blessed together than apart. And so I say, I want to share with you as a couple and remind everyone here what it takes to have a healthy marriage and a healthy relationship with God. First, you need to have forgiveness. A healthy couple knows how to forgive. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, we read, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The truth is everyone makes mistakes. But the Bible tells us that everyone can find forgiveness with God as long as your pride does not get in the way. Every couple must resist the temptation to prove that one is right and one is wrong. In 1 Corinthians 13, we read that love bears all things. So the first point is, forgive one another. The second point is about time. A healthy couple knows how to be available for one another. You have to make time for each other and show that your forgiveness does not come with any conditions or that you're playing games with each other. Only when you're available with each other or for each other, you can work through the challenges and problems that will come your way. We know that God made himself available through his son, Jesus Christ. In John 3:16, we read, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so first, we need to show forgiveness. Second, we need to create time for one another. And third, we need to talk about expectations. A healthy couple knows that you can't be everything for each other. Some people get married thinking, She will always make me happy. He will always provide me with enough love. We can handle everything by ourselves. But marriage is not a 50-50 proposition. It's about both partners knowing how to honestly give 100% of themselves to each other. And even then, you need some spiritual help, and God will do that for you. In Ephesians 4.15, the Apostle, Apostle Paul said to speak the truth in love. People forget and don't read what Paul also wrote in verse 12. 
The only way you can speak the truth of love is, is to be completely humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And so first is forgiveness, second is time, third is clarifying expectations and being there 100% for each other and really speaking the truth in love. The fourth way that you can have a healthy relationship with in a marriage and with God is change. A healthy couple knows they will have to make adjustments in their life together. Adjustment is another word for change. And my father told me before I was married in 1988, way back then, that people change over the years. And the secret to a long and blessed marriage is to change together. We all resist change because we're not sure things will be better after the change than before the change. There's also something to do with control in there as well. We, we like to control things. But with faith, we can see change as something good. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ and trusts him will be changed by the unconditional love of God and will be blessed by the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So there is forgiveness, there is time, there is expectations, there is change, but what really makes marriage so exciting and a relationship with God so exciting is joy. Joy, J-O-Y. And a healthy couple knows how to celebrate life together. You will have a joyful, fulfilled life when you commit your life to God and commit your marriage to God or commit a relationship to God. Jesus said about those who believe in him, he said, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. That's from John chapter 10, verse 10. I believe a young couple comes together with excitement and joy and love, but that will only grow if they remember these five things, if they remember to forgive and spend time and clarify expectations and go through change communicating with love. And then they'll have the joy that they so much want in their marriage. I know that when I give that message to a young couple, they are so much thinking about everything else going on. The bride may be thinking, is my dress on straight? Or what am I supposed to do next? The groom might be thinking, oh my goodness, what's after this? And I don't want to trip over the steps. And the people in the audience and the congregation often are listening more carefully than the couple. And so I think these type of messages are important for any person who's married and in fact, anybody that has a relationship that they want to keep strong with each other or with God. So that's a message I usually share at weddings. Here is a video of some of the photos at my daughter's wedding, which was held north of Holland, Michigan, on a lake outside. Um, I hope you enjoy. Loving me is part of it. 
I'm going to conclude with a prayer and then we'll have one final hymn. Heavenly Father, each person who's listening to my voice needs a loving relationship with you. They need loving relationships with their family members and with their friends. None of us do well on our own for much time at all. Eventually we realize that we need community, we need support. We need to know that somebody cares that we're having a bad day or a good day. I know that loneliness is a tremendous problem for many people as they get older. Many of their friends have already passed on or live somewhere else, and their family can be very busy. So I pray that you will be that companion in their life, that through your Holy Spirit you will encourage them and touch them and help them know that you have not forgotten about them, that your unconditional love and grace and even joy can be theirs. Thank you for the joy you've shared in my life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.